Thank you so much, guys, for joining us for the first track on the personal development. I'm sorry, the first panel for the personal development track. This is the Personal Growth Boost Plus Personal Branding panel. I have some amazing entrepreneurs, CEOs, and um, friends who are going to share some insight with you. Looks like we are getting um, some great uh, viewers checking us out on the left hand or guess right hand side. There's a chat feature. Yeah. Please make sure. Can you guys see me and hear me okay? <laughs> yes, perfectly. <laughs> okay, good. Um, we're going to ask that any of our viewers and attendees put any questions over to the left in the chat. We'll be getting through those throughout the panel and at the end. But I am Molly Walsh, and I have been um, really excited to get this panel together and um, excited for their uh, wisdom with you all today. Let me introduce everyone. Um, who shall I start with first? Let me see here. Ladies first, of course. Ladies first. <laughs> the gentleman. <laughs> Got a little, give me just a second. Awesome. Um, and as I do that, panelists, speakers, would you mind putting your contact information um, over there right. in the chat for people to find you. I'm going to start off and introduce Ms. Bree Clark. Bree is an award-winning TEDx speaker, media personality, and leading community influencer. She is a founder and creative director of the Iman Project, a lifestyle brand that builds a diverse community through style, design, and workshops, ensuring everyone has a seat at the table. It's a vital resource in connecting individuals here in the Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex and her goal is to show diversity is more than race. Brie has combined her passion for design as well as purpose of community by creating magical spaces, experiences, and opportunities through creative workshops, curated local markets, community events, and more. She has built a multifaceted business, all while being a mother to her two twin boys, Kai and Kale, and wife to husband, Carlos Clark. They both together recently opened two lifestyle studios, Little House on Ruth and Little House of Bishop Arts, that focus on bringing the community together. Bree seeks to empower others and bring people together no matter the color of their skin, style, background, age, religion, or opinion, and her passion and purpose has certainly not gone unnoticed. She has worked and been featured in many different publications, and um, I am so excited that you're here, Brie. She never wants to forget why she started and wants to continue to build and create beautiful communities, all thinking about what the wants and needs of others are. Um, you light up the room everywhere you go, Brie. I'm so excited <laughs> for you're here. Thank, Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Yes, absolutely. I see that you put your contact stuff in there. Um, thank you so much. Miss Fanny, can I start with you next? <laughs> sure, love to. Yes, Fanny Dunnigan is a LinkedIn creative content strategist and CEO of PathLinks. She helps business owners and corporate professionals build their unique LinkedIn brand and content plans. She trains and empowers individuals and leaders in charge of their personal and business branding. She creates values for others and builds an engaging community around their products, services, and values. Um, you know, Fanny is one of the most intentional people that I know and um, has been a huge part of my developmental process as a woman in entrepreneurship. So I'm very, very excited to have you here, too. Thanks Thank for you. having me. Yeah. Um, let me get over to you, Josh. I'll start oh. with you. You're on my All list. Right. I don't want to have Let's you laugh. <laughs> <laughs> Josh is awesome. He has been a founder and the C and CVO of um, Bolt. Which would you like me to say ETA Bolt or Bolt? Either one's fine. Either one's fine. I'd love for you to. I want to make Bolt. sure I get it Let's right. Let's just do Bolt. Let's just do Bolt for now. Awesome. <laughs> um, he's multifaceted man, which um, has really inspired me to look at his company as one that um, is really changing the corporate culture. He curates educational and cultural workshops using expert panelists. They focus on relevant and timely topics such as diversity and inclusion, as well as creating company culturally virtually. Josh wants to change the world through Bolt by increasing the potential in individuals at their workplaces. 
He has found that the best way to do this is to approach employers with tactics, implementations, and improve employee engagement that is investing in each person's goals and interests as an employee. Um, Josh and Bolt have worked with multiple companies like Microsoft, VentureX, Dibs, F45, as well as emerging esports groups like Geek Leaks on educational events and activations. Bolt is implementing technology components to capture data in real time and additionally incorporating the latest and greatest methods of feedback and data extraction to help map ongoing strategies relevant for each company that they work with. Um, Josh is awesome, a good friend, and always somebody that has been positive and um, optimistic in my uh, search for great people in the community. So thank you so much, Josh, for uh, um, accepting this opportunity. Yes, thank you guys for having me. I really, really appreciate it. I'm excited to be here and excited to share. Yes, I'm excited to hear from you. Yes, um, April. Good. April is the CEO and co-founder of Handsome, the leading professional network for the beauty industry. She has led the company in raising over six hundred thousand dollars and has been featured in American Salon, Modern Salon, Hello Alice, The Send, Austin Inno, Austin Business Journal, and Sway. <coughs> Austin is a graduate of the for I can't get that wrong. At April is a graduate of the University of Texas El Paso, where she received a full ride scholarship on behalf of the Daniels Fund for being a highly motivated minority individual with high potential. I second that. High potential. <laughs> Prior to Hanson, she was vice president and in an investment startup that raised and invested over $130 million. April has been awarded employee of the year and was a winner of the I Am So Gal pitch competition in Austin, Texas. She's committed her life to community enhancement and as an avid philanthropist and has led multiple fundraisers and teams across the finish lines of the NYC Marathon and the Damn That Cancer Runs. Her mission is to motivate people to reach their truest potential and act as a voice for and create highly impactful cultural and economic change for underrepresented communities. You know, and I've known April for many years and she continues to be someone that I um, aspire to be like in business and in life. She is truly authentically herself on and off. Um, so thank you, April, for accepting this opportunity as well. I'm so honored. Thank you so much, Molly. Excited to be here. Good. I'm glad. Let me end with Ms. Bree Crow. Bree will be moderating this panel um, and uh, she has been somebody that I look at as um, you know, someone that can do it all. If and she knows, you know, she knows what she can do, and, and if she doesn't, she'll get you uh, a MacBook that does. My MacBook. Um, so I am excited to introduce Miss Bree Crow. Her mission is to be a catalyst for growth, confidence, and connection across local businesses and technology entrepreneurs. As a multi-passionate professional and creative, she has built two B two B businesses while running her community organization, Women Tech Co and hosts now a weekly video series called Virtual Life. Today, her talent acquisition and consulting agency serves digital SMB companies who have distributed teams by bringing a multi-dimensional approach to hiring technically advanced and missioned aligned talent. For the same SMBs as well as individuals, she works behind the camera as a photographer, shooting original brand imagery as well as authentic portraits and headshots. Bree is a Texas Tech University alumnus and spends her free time outdoors exploring new cultures through art, music, and travel. She's been awarded for her Succeed by Serving Worth Ethic and featured in Dallas Innovates, Voyage Dallas, and as a contributing author and photographer for Launch DFW. Um, yeah. So much. I wanted to jump right into the conversation. I know Bree has um, a ton of information that she wants to get extraction from you guys. So I'm going to turn off my camera, but I'll be here. I'll be in the chat. If you'd like anything um, link wise, let me know and I'll make sure to get it over to the, the people over in the side. Wonderful. Awesome. Thank you so much, Molly. I appreciate it. Um, Thank you, Molly. Yes, Thank you, I'm Molly. grateful that you yeah. pulled all of us together because I think that um, just knowing, um, luckily I know a couple of you, but then Josh and April, we haven't had a chance to meet in person. So um, I'm really excited to learn even more so about your backgrounds and careers from what I've seen on LinkedIn. And, you know, honestly, I'm excited enough where I kind of just want to jump into first things first, really, that um, 
and I'm not sure if there's background noise or anything, but if y'all can hear me, if otherwise, maybe mute. I'm not sure if there's additional sounds going on. Um, but April, I'd love to kind of kick off with you because I think there's something I'd love to hear from your perspective of, you know, when we talk about personal brand, that first step has to be identifying what makes you, you. And that mm. is so much harder. I mean, it's so much easier said than done because you just really can go throughout life without really thinking about um, what makes you unique and different from another person. So I'm curious from your perspective of really how you've gone about it um, and how you recommend others go about identifying what makes them unique um, for their personal branding. Yeah, I think that this is such a, a great topic of conversation and it's so important, um, not only just as an entrepreneur, but as anyone in the workplace, you know, um, for me, it's been throughout my life that I have really had to stop and pause and recognize that I have a unique perspective, you know, and I think that that's important for everyone to learn is that everyone has a um, very unique perspective. You know, there's no one else in the world that has the exact perspective that you have. And it's really about pausing and recognizing what is that perspective, you know? And it might be something that you're not realizing is, it might, it might just not be completely apparent and evident to you. And so for me, my unique perspective is that I am a brown female founder, you know, and before becoming a brown female founder, I was one of the only women in a very male dominated industry. I was in an oil and gas in the oil and gas industry. I was one of the only women there. I hired the other three women. And so I definitely have this unique perspective of being able to sit at the table with, um, quite honestly, a bunch of white older men that were in their 60s, 50s and 60s. And I think that when it comes to identifying your unique perspective, it's just about really kind of taking a step back and looking at what type of experiences have I had in my life that no one else has that I can carry with me as a story to help educate others and build on other people's perspective. And so I think that that is definitely um, a starting point in identifying your unique perspective. Absolutely, that's such a good point because when I was doing this exercise, really just even two years ago, just to reevaluate myself, I had to reflect on even childhood memories that at the time was like embarrassing because it was like I was the only person and it felt odd and I hated it. It was like, oh, I can't believe my parents made me do that or different things. And I'm like, wait a second, now that's actually something I can leverage, right? Um, yes. So yeah, finding those unique experiences is absolutely critical. Well, Josh, yeah, I mean, oh, go ahead. Oh. I was just going to piggyback and say, you know, and I think that a lot of people exactly what you're saying is you might not recognize that it could be something so small, like maybe maybe you were homeschooled, maybe you have a perspective of um, going to a historically black university or a Hispanic serving institution. Those are all things that give you a unique perspective that your counterpoints may not have. Yeah, absolutely. If anybody else has anything to add, definitely jump in. But I, Josh, I'd love to hear from your perspective too. You know, with so many people being online today and now more than ever, we are all having to be digital, um, which makes for more noise, right? For better or for worse right. in a lot of ways. Um, yeah. <laughs> I'm curious from your perspective of someone building their brand now, maybe it's from scratch and really just mm -hmm. getting into this. Or maybe there's, you know, someone from a veteran, you know, has been doing this. What are some ways that you feel like right now could be ways to differentiate your branding? Mm, that was an excellent question. Um, the first thing that jumped out to me whenever you were asking the question was the word noise, how to separate yourself from the noise. Um, and, and the way I look at it is when I think of the word noise, I'm, I'm thinking of just like a giant crowd of, of people just like all shouting. And it goes back to what April was saying. When you're unique, you're actually separating yourself from that crowd and you're being your authentic self. Because like you said, everyone has had, you know, their own experiences and this is what makes us all different. So if you're trying to live out someone else's life and you're trying to, you know, go along with that noise um, or that crowd per se, you're not going to stand out, whether it's your personal brand, whether it's your business brand. Um, like. At, at the end of the day, it's about like disrupting these things that you know have our you know our normal um, and being different. Um, like Apple, for example, you know they they disrupted the status quo, and you know look at look at them now. Like you don't have to 
I don't have to sell you guys on Apple, but um, <laughs> we're, 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 we, we see over, you know, 5,000 ads, is it like over 5,000 ads a day? And, you know, if, if you're looking like someone else or you're similar to someone else, you're not going to stand out very much. So it's pretty it's pretty simple. Just be yourself, be authentic, be your true self um, and, and bring that you know unique perspective to the table. Now's the time to find some stilts, right? Like if noise is a really crowded street, now's the time right. to find some stilts <laughs> yeah. and somehow become quite taller than everyone. But something that you're mentioning there in, in talking about being authentic, and I think that a lot of people may gravitate to this that are tuning in right now, it takes a little bit of courage to be authentic, right? Like yeah. it takes a little bit of bravery to say, this is my differentiator. And it may be something that you feel like you've been embarrassed about at one point, or that you maybe felt like you wanted to hide it at some point or another, being a Brown founder, being, you know, whatever that experience that you had to go through that may have been a trial or a tribulation. Um, I'm curious if anyone wants to jump in on, you know, what it takes to be authentic is that bravery. Oh, I love that one. <laughs> um, Cause I get, I get that a lot. I get people that are saying that, Oh, um, you have no fear. You're fearless. You just go into things. And I don't, I say that I have tons of fear, but I don't lack courage. And I think that sometimes people, you know, compare them and put them the same, but they're two different things. And if you are putting yourself out there and as an entrepreneur, we're all entrepreneurs here. We're all building something with our hands and our heart and that we're passionate about. So we know that requires a lot of courage and we have to use that courage to get over those jumps and get over that thing, which goes really back to what you were saying, Josh, about being authentic and just making sure that whatever you're doing, whatever you're branding, it's aligning with you as an entrepreneur, as a person. So. Absolutely. Well, and, and I have a little hashtag that I want to share with people is I have this hashtag do it scared. And mm. yeah. I think do it anyways, let your heart pound, be afraid, yeah. <laughs> and then do it scared. Yes. <laughs> that was a great quote, Bree. Um, I have a lot of fear, but I don't lack courage. I mean, that is definitely going to write that down for sure. <laughs> Um, and, you know, one of my favorite quotes that I've ever seen that impacted me so much was speak the truth, even if your voice shakes, you know, being able to add that caveat that we understand that your voice may shake, but um, you still have to really step into being authentic. Um, so, Brie, I'd love for you to talk a little bit about, um, and I think people have already mentioned it in the comments, how much they love your Instagram feed um, and they love your <laughs> newsletters, which your newsletters Thank are phenomenal. You. Um, as so well, time. <laughs> exactly. So that yeah. that time has been spent on cohesiveness, and I think yes. when it comes to personal branding, that may be one of the things that a lot of people don't think about, or at least maybe don't think about it as often as they should. Is cohesiveness is essential in that personal branding, and it's but it's tough to maintain. So I'm curious yeah. for for yourself. Um, part of being consistent is you may not know always what you want to do and be able to stay consistent because you just want to yeah. change your idea. We're entrepreneurs. We love shiny things. Exactly. How, have you, <laughs> yeah. right. how have you adapted and, and what do you recommend as tactics to be able to stay consistent in that marketing? Well, I think why I've been consistent and why it's kind of easier for me, you are your brand and you are your business. And sometimes I think we think that we're doing business and we're doing work within our brand, but we kind of forget that we are our business and our brand. So mm -hmm. if you're aligning your business and what you do and your brand with who you are as a person and you know who you are, then it's going to align and gonna be cohesive with everything you do. Um, I do a lot of different things. And it's like I have the markets and the workshops and the speaking things. And it's just all, it can look like it's all over the place, but I make sure that it's all coming from one point and one starting point and never forgetting my why, making sure that's the underlining thing in, under every single thing that I do. I think it's just very important that it's like, we make sure that all that we do is aligning with who we are as a person. And if we do that, then we see so much growth and cohesiveness and consistency with our brand and our business. So I would love for folks in the comments right now, if you are active, I'd love for y'all to contribute and mention your why, like whether it's maybe mm -hmm. your personal values, maybe you just list yeah. out four words that you feel like are your core values, but I'd love in the comments for you to add your values or maybe your reason as to why you've started your business. Um, we're going to keep the conversation going, but I'd love for that to be there. Um, so 
Fanny, when we're talking about consistency, you crush this as well. And especially from a video perspective, we talked about Instagram mm -hmm. um, and newsletters a little bit, which y'all we're only being able to skim the surface. Like there's so much wisdom that y'all have to share on each of these topics. Um, but Fanny, I'd love for you to talk about how folks can get over that fear of putting themselves in front of a camera and being yeah. on video. Um, you know, right now you're probably being forced to, to be on zoom, but you can still maybe get away with not having your camera on, right. but it's different when you're doing it for marketing. Yes. What are some of your tips? Well, first of all, like, I think really understand why do video at all. I think short of meeting somebody in person, video is the second best to communicating who you are um, to an audience. And I think the longer and the more consistent you are on video, the more that people feel like they know you and the more that you can build trust with your audience and the more you have that kind of relationship with your community. And, and it's with that basis that people then want to buy from you or be part of your community and learn from you. Um, so, so let that be the driving force of why video. And from there, I think a big part of it is if I were to say like one piece of advice is that you always have to make sure you're focusing out instead of focusing in. Right? Mm. I think too often when we're building our brand, if we focus in, then we're worried about how we look and are we stammering? Are we saying, um, and am I dressed the right way? Am I feeling, you know, passionate enough today and all this kind of stuff. And so all that is what I call focusing in. And that never goes anywhere to our head and get into that imposter syndrome and all that negativity. However, if we focus out and ask ourselves, what is the best thing I can say to my community today? What is the most important message I can convey today? How can I help that person on the other side of the screen? How can I provide the most value or give the best tip or piece of advice today? And so I think when we focus out, then everything calms inside our head. And then we're able to provide value for the community and think of the best way to serve. And I think that's a huge uh, way to ground ourselves and, and overcome that fear and um, provide value. I think it's a great point. You're, 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 all, those, all those notes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <was> really good. <laughs> I mean, because it really, it really uh, does take dropping the ego. Not to say that you're yeah. you have an ego because you're doing video, but yeah. it takes dropping it, saying this isn't about me; it's about what I'm contributing. Right. Yeah. Well, I think we're we're our worst critic, right? Like our our inner critic is is probably the loudest and and most you know uh, judgmental sometimes. And uh, yeah, yeah, it's really about focusing out and and like skimming through, whether it's Instagram or LinkedIn or whatever kind of platform, skimming through the comments and the constructive ones, that is, right. and really <laughs> figuring out, <laughs> really like figuring out how best to serve them. <laughs> April, Josh, Bree, I'm curious from a video perspective, I, like, I know Bree has done a lot of um, actual news media types of mm -hmm. um, video work. Um, Josh and April, I'm not sure if you've done video from like a content mm -hmm. perspective, What's some of your, your thoughts on what Fanny talked about? You know, I think that Fanny, you just like, you nailed it and hit the, hit the nail on the head. Mm -hmm. You know, um, something that I am always reminding myself of when it comes to personal branding, and this is including video, is that the entire purpose is to invite everyone on a journey with you. That is what people want to be a part of. They want to be a part of your journey of growth, of your company's journey. They want to be a part of something that's evolving, you know, and I think that when it comes to videos, it's an opportunity to invite people in on a more intimate journey with you than they would be able to see in a, a, an email or a tweet, you know, and it's really that opportunity to get intimate in that journey with your uh, audience, whoever that be. Absolutely. You know, honestly, one of the things that that what you just talked about is being on that journey is and y'all are going to laugh, but TikTok. 
I think TikTok has really (laughs) um, jumped out as the way that I've now, I've, the level of excitement that I've had from watching a guy that I started following with no following, gaining a member, um, gaining a model contract with IMG models, um, you know, and another guy signed as an artist by going viral on TikTok, right? And it was like the little spurts of serotonin for me as someone who followed him, you know, these people as those things are coming about, I was like, oh, this is really amazing. And so I can say even just from a user perspective, spot on. <laughs> you love to be on the journey to see yeah. someone succeed for sure. Um, yes. So April, I, I can imagine from learning a little bit about your background coming from an investment firm, right? Um, being in some in structured environments, like you mentioned, um, being the only in several different cases, what is, what does personal growth look like in that environment where you are the only and you also feel like maybe that should limit me or maybe I should tiptoe in some way, which is not the case, but maybe mm-hmm. a little voice in your head or someone's head is saying those kinds of things. What's your perspective on finding external personal growth? Yeah, um, there's a, a couple of things on that. First, I want to acknowledge the little voice in your head, you know, that is uh, your ego, you know, and telling you that you can't do something or you shouldn't do something. And I think that's a really important thing to acknowledge because it happens to every single one of us every single day. You know, it's a very real real thing that you are doubting yourself and questioning yourself. And it's important to um, trust yourself and learn how to lean into that even more. And when it comes to, um, you know, my background in a very structured um, investment environment and personal growth, really that environment that I was in at the time, um, it forced me into a lot of growth because I was the only woman, because I was the only minority, you know, and I'm grateful for that. And I realized that over time, I've actually put myself in those situations because I want to evolve and I want to grow. And I think that that really is the differentiator for entrepreneurs. Entrepreneurs are constantly throwing themselves into situations that will shock their perspectives, you know, because when your perspective shocked, that's where you expand. And I think that um, that's something that entrepreneurs do very well is constant seeking of personal through uh, webinars like this, connecting with other people, even learning from people that are on our team. It doesn't matter if the knowledge is coming from the top or from the bottom. There's always opportunities to expand. Absolutely. Well, and Josh, you have a um, a, like from a different perspective um, in the sense that you help companies really drive culture right um and drive right. engagement with their um their teams and employees which i feel like a lot of companies um that didn't have any type of remote work program um have had to scramble a little bit as to what does our culture look like if we are not all in the office together um but right. when it comes to this personal growth in a lot of ways that can be something i think could be leaned on at this point in time for engagement i'm curious for what you're kind of recommending at this point um you know that can help leaders prompt their employees um, and their teams to whether it's seek personal growth or um you know have their own brand okay sweet all right well first the first thing i thought of and this is you know piggybacking off april once again <laughs> i love how you think that, by the way. okay so <laughs> A word that I use um, and I've been using with, with employers and companies is cognitive diversity. So whenever you're able to bring in new different perspectives and new ideas, one that normally increases the engagement, but like what April says, it sparks new perspectives. And then that propels whatever you're doing forward. Um, but there's all different types of games online. There's like trivia that you can do with your teams um, at home while you know you can connect them. Um, you can connect them to this app. I think it's uh, it's on forum. I'll put it in the chat um, whenever I'm done. Awesome. Um, but it has like games. It has uh, trivia. It's all sorts of ways that you're able to you know stay engaged with your team. Um, I like to do with my particular team. We like to you know read a, a, a similar book, or um, we're all reading the same book right now currently, um, and we like to listen to the same podcast. We share a podcast um, constantly, edifying each other um, constantly keeping up with each other, being transparent, being authentic, all these things increases engagement with not only, you know, your employees and your team, but with an audience that is watching you guys. Um, because like these, um, like Bree said, there's, or I'm sorry, Fania said, 
um, they they want to see you guys' journey. So that incorporates all of that, um, and it definitely stems from you know that cognitive diversity. Um, my team is very diverse. Um, I'm like, oh, I never thought about that. That's an interesting idea. You know, like just because you know they're from a different background than I am from, um, and I think that's why I am the way that I am is because of the amount of experiences that I've been through and been in um, and where I came from and able to reach you know different levels by meeting different people um, even if you don't believe the same thing and it's okay you know what I mean like not everyone is going to have the same viewpoints as you you still need to go have coffee with them take them out you know and and get to know their perspective um, and that actually will you know create that synergy for you to 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 you know, reach a new level and new heights um, and obviously engagement, of course. I love that. You know, I'm curious, y'all in the chat mention if you've been um, if, you, if you've been a part of or if you would be open to being a part of a book club as a part of your company. Um, put in the chat if you have um, and maybe if you have a book recommendation um, for someone that could be able to jump into that. But um, I think that that's a great point because everything you mentioned, Josh, invites a question. And that's half of the battle is really getting people to ask and ask the questions. And so if you're listening to the exact same podcast, three people can take away three totally different perspectives from that podcast. Mm -hmm. Very smart. Does anybody have anything they want to add on that too, just in terms of what you've done to engage your teams or fellow coworkers? Well, I, I um, actually okay. wanted to plug if that's okay. Yeah. Hi. Hey, I just was thinking, <laughs> I particularly listen to all of y'all's podcasts. Would you please make sure that you <laughs> put your podcast on here? I'd love for the people to really start following you because all of y'all do create some really interesting conversations. Some are hard and some are funny and some are really informative. And I think they really do need to. I'm the hard one. <laughs> You're not the only hard one because I listen to some other I'm not doing the thing. Um, well, I mean, I listen to Fanny's too, and Fanny's is, it, when I say hard, I don't mean in, in a sense of like, in, like, um, uh, like com combative, I mean hard in the terms of like, these are things you need to work at. These are things you need to actively think on, you know, and, and that's the kind of value I get out of the different podcasts who I've put together on the panel. So make sure you guys plug yeah. that. Yeah, absolutely. Well, um, Thank you, Molly. Bree, I think you have a really, I want to hear your thoughts on this because I follow you on Instagram. So I already know that you have great <laughs> thoughts on this and I follow you. What are some of these? I have a lot of thoughts, too many thoughts. Sometimes. Yes. <laughs> but what are some of these lies that we're telling ourselves? I mean, I already know and have tried to work on the lies that I'm telling myself, but when it comes to personal branding, when it comes to video, like Fanny talks about, you know, what are some of these things that you feel like are we're creating our own barriers? And maybe you can. From your um, I really feel. That I feel like the comparison bug eats us all, and we're so easy to con. And that holds us back from so much. You know, when you're so busy comparing and looking around you and looking on social media, Instagram is so easy to keep scrolling and look what this person is posting, what this person is doing, what what they're doing in their business, where they're being featured, where they're doing it. And I say that all the time. People can see like, oh, you're on the news and you're doing this, you're all over the place and stuff. We all are trying to figure this out. And sometimes we have to really yep. tell ourselves that even though you look like you have it all figured out, you don't. And um, I have a friend that tells me it's like you feel like you've reached that point and that point means like you still are still going. So I feel that it's very important to tell yourself and to let yourself give yourself grace and let you let, give yourself that yes. you it's going to take time. It's OK. And never compare what you're doing, how you're doing to other people next to you, because we each have our own battle and we don't know what goes behind that Instagram door, what's going on behind that Instagram door. So I think that's a And Chadwick really Boseman is a, you know, I mean, I, we, we lost such an incredible talent Perfect this week. Example. Um, yeah. Perfect example. You know, example. I absolutely hate the comments yeah. and the things like that, that he endured in those moments. And to Fanny's point mm -hmm. too, you take the constructive yeah. criticism comments, the people who are telling you you're not perfect, that you're doing things wrong and the reality is we all know that nobody's perfect <laughs> so you can't 
<laughs> and I think that goes back no. to like, sorry to cut you off, what I was saying about the branding and how that you are your brand. So you take it really personal because it's like, you know, when you people are attacking their brand, they're attacking you. But we also have to tell ourselves we're putting ourselves out there. We're putting our story out there and we're doing that for a reason. So when you're putting yourself out there, putting your brand, your business, your life, your story, you're not just doing it for yourself. As Fanny brought up, we're serving. We're doing it for others. So when you look at it that perspective and you take a step back and just look at it that way, that really has helped me with the growth of our business, the growth of our Absolutely. brand. Absolutely. Molly, are we good on time? I, I can't remember. I can't hear you, but it's okay. Um, <laughs> we have about okay. seven minutes left, yes. Okay, cool. Uh, um, yes. So, Fanny, I would love for you to share an anecdote of when you've seen someone start to take video seriously. You right? They They posted the one video. Now they've been, you know, flash forward to they've posted 30 videos or they've done some sort of campaign. What, what have you seen um, from, from that perspective of somebody who's really made an intentional effort to do that? Yeah. Um, I'd like to maybe first quote one of my, my favorite YouTuber, and his name is Sean Cannell. Um, and he said, let your moments in obscurity prepare you for popularity. So... I think during this time when if, if you're just starting to create a brand or starting to, uh, you know, get out there, nobody's watching anyways. <laughs> like, you know, we, we, we all start with small followers, <laughs> right? So, so now's the time, right? And so one of my clients, uh, she, is a, she, she was a corporate recruiter. And uh, she wanted to build her brand on LinkedIn. And so she just started. And what happened is even though, you know, she was in a corporate company, people started to notice her in her company because she was posting tips and advice, sharing events, sharing um, quotes. And so even, even though this is a you know, Dallas startup week for entrepreneurs, if there's people out there that are still in corporate jobs, like now's the time to even start there and build up your brand and she ended up getting tons of visibility from senior management and that opened it up, her up to all kinds of opportunities to be part of like um, research groups or to head up some wellness programs at work. And so that came out of her corporate brand and corporate um, career. And then what happened is when COVID hit, she, uh, she lost her job. And I think a lot of people are facing that right now during this, these challenging times. But because she has spent almost a year building up her brand, by the time she lost her job, she even shared with me that she actually felt less fearful because she had already had a whole year of building up her network, meeting lots of different people online, having tons of connections. So now she's joined with another startup and become her own entrepreneur. And she immediately got some contracting jobs uh, because she had spent all that time building up her network. So yeah. don't wait till you're in crisis mode to build a brand and to build a network. <laughs> Absolutely. Do it while you have the comfort or stability. Um, and that way it'll serve you yeah. way off into the future beyond anything you can, you can imagine. Oh, absolutely. That is a critical step. I mean, and when the easiest time to find a job is when you're not looking. So yes, <laughs> yes, <laughs> says the recruiter. <laughs> um, <laughs> April, the easiest time to get recruitment is when you don't need money. Yes. Exactly. There you go. From the investment <laughs> person. Yes. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. Um, so I want to wrap up in kind of an interesting, um, when you mentioned COVID and obviously there's, a, I, I call them COVID caveats, like there's the discussion and then there's the COVID caveats um, that come into play. So anyone can kind of jump in on this, but from how is it testing everything that you've known about your brand and the way that you've approached things. Um, you know, y'all each have such a different background in the work that you're doing. So, um, you know, Brie has brick and mortar locations, trying to figure out how to bring people in the space. Um, shout out to going yeah. national with an event that she's done locally, but going nationally. So I think okay. congratulations on that. But who would love to jump in first around how Thank COVID um, has really disrupted that? 
Oh, well, I'll say something first. Um, well, <sighs> COVID-19, <laughs> what can we say? And I'm so tired of hearing you, COVID-19. Don't say that word. <laughs> so, so, anyways, Lord Voldemort. Um, right. right, seriously. Um, but it, it definitely affected us um, as a company and like what we did. We actually um, enjoyed doing activations and workshops on site um, and at companies. Um, however, we had to shift and do that virtually. And I think what it what it did to a lot of companies is it just showed how agile you are. If you're able to pivot, if you're able to still move towards your goals, um, and that's kind of just how I put things into per perspectives. Um, and this is how I also measure success: is you know if you're moving towards your goals, and then if those goals bring you fulfillment. Um, so those the, the goals that we had, and we were doing workshops, you know, actively um, at on site. We still kept those goals, and we did it virtually. Um, and then those goals that we still had brought us fulfillment. Um, so it's 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 all about perspective. Um, it's the way you look at it. Um, and if you still are trying to reach uh, the goal that you have in mind, you just need to pivot, um, be agile, and you know learn learn from you know. Every, this was new to all of us. I'm, I'm in the studio right now with Mark and Scott here at uh, Venture X Sync Lab Media. This is you know I've never sat behind a green screen before. You know, this is pretty cool. I'm in a green screen. I'm like, wow, this I didn't even think you could do all this. This is you're the most colorful, Josh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It looks great. <laughs> yes, absolutely. But no, this is the world that we live in now. And um you have to learn to yeah. adjust. And, and I think that uh, it's mm -hmm. it's definitely survival of the fittest. And you know, it's it's not necessarily a competition. You you want to learn from other people, but you, you gotta be able to survive in this type of environment because it doesn't seem like it's going to change anytime soon. Yeah. So, you know, just just being open to learn um, and, you know, keeping those goals in mind. And, you know, that's that's I think that's absolutely that's the best steps you can do. Anybody else? Can yeah. I uh, yeah. just add a real quick thing? Like, I think, you know, what a huge client of mine um, lost 80 percent of their clients during COVID. And I was helping them with branding and uh, recruitment. And so that all dropped, right? And and so suddenly I had extra time. And I realized three things that I learned was, number one, double down on all content creation <laughs> everywhere. So that, because all eyes are online. So that's number one. Number two was spread out into other platforms, right? Like I, I really, I got into YouTube, so I started following a bunch of YouTubers. I felt so out of my league <laughs> um, because I've always been just mainly LinkedIn. So I think spread out on other channels, find other ways to express yourself and find channels that fit your style and, and brand. And then number three, I ended up getting approved for LinkedIn Live. And so talk about doing it scared. <laughs> but nothing like live. <laughs> um, but... But man, it, it really forced me to grow. And I think yeah. for those of you on all different platforms, there's live features everywhere, but it's such a great way to engage with your audience in that moment. And so I, if I leave you guys with anything like try live, yeah, <laughs> live I shows, it. it's <laughs> adrenaline. Burst <laughs> right yeah. of adrenaline. April, what were you going to add? I'll add to that. So First of all, Josh, your definition of success, like I wrote it down and I'm going to follow that. You know, it is so it's so spot on moving toward goals that bring you fulfillment. And I think that that's the most important thing is like stay focused on the fact you may not achieve what you intended to achieve by X date. But if you're still moving towards it and it's bringing you fulfillment, then that is success. And I just think that was so remarkable. And, you know, it goes in line with um, for us during COVID um, to be super transparent with everyone. It it rocked the entire world. You know, it rocked the whole world in diff in very different ways. Um, for us, we lost an investment that we had been working on for nine months, a very large investment. Um, and. We understand why we understand the landscape, but what that actually did for us is immediately when we lost that investment on March 16th, the day the U.S. shut down, you know, we went into this mode of, all right, well, what can we do? You know, it was to Fanny's point for us, it was doubling down on what we can control. 
And so we cut all of our marketing expenses to extend our runway. We cut all of our costs and we said, how can we grow this thing? Just the two of us without having to outsource anything. And we did it. You know, we did it on our own. We've grown 600 percent organically throughout COVID. And I just feel like it was truly a uh, blessing for us that we ended up losing that investment because now we're in a better position to raise money at a, at a better valuation. And so I think that there is always, if you're still kind of going through the mud, there is going to be something at the end of the tunnel if you just stay focused on moving towards those goals that bring you fulfillment. Ah, I'm so glad you got to share that because um, that th that's real talk. And we absolutely need that right now because entrepreneurs and founders cannot be afraid to be like, I am on the verge of um, losing big clients. I'm on the verge of not being able to pay my bills because if you don't talk about it or at least acknowledge it in your own brain, then you can't move past it. And so I think that mm -hmm. I'm so grateful for you for being honest around what that journey has looked like because there's that significant upside behind mm -hmm. the, the slog through the mud. <laughs> they can really test you. I wanted to get everyone, um, sorry, and for Bree, um, everyone's kind of final thoughts. We have about two minutes left before we have to really get um, the next panel on, but um, Bree. Yeah. So I'd love, um, everyone could approach oh, well, it. Oh, um, go ahead. <laughs> oh, it's the two briefs. Yeah. <laughs> I was just going to say the last two minutes for everyone to address. Maybe if you um, have a goal or a way that someone can measure their personal brand, like and growing it. Um, so maybe just from that perspective, or if you have something else as a lingering thought, but something to yeah. make it tangible. I'd love that. And also uh, make sure you include your contact links and your podcasts and things, how the people can get in hold of you. Brie, would you, Brie Clark, Miss Brie Clark, would you mean? <laughs> um, I think like the ending, my closing thing was just like, of course, with all the stuff going on and with COVID and just, I feel like we we hit two pandemics um, lately, um, just to never forget your why. Your why is going to keep you there. It's going to keep you pushing through all of it, um, through your ups and your downs. And then also to celebrate the small things. I feel that sometimes we have to wait for big things to happen. And right now, especially with all that's happening, we need to celebrate even the small victories because they truly are something that, especially through these Absolutely. times. Absolutely, I love that. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? About Miss um, Annie, what about you? Well, when I, I put in the chat earlier just about one of my favorite books right now is Atomic Habits by James Clear. And one thing he said, right, Bree? I saw it on your bookshelf once. <laughs> uh, and uh, one of the things that really stuck with me and to tie that back to, I think it was uh, Bree Clark that mentioned like, you know, with the competitive side, like we, we compare ourselves with others and all that. His point was just be 1% better every day and, and just compare yourself to yourself yesterday. And let that be our measurement. And so if yesterday I was afraid to do something, but today I finally did it, or yesterday um, I had this amount of, you know, 50 slides done and today I got 70 slides done or whatever that is, as long as we're 1% better every day, I think that in itself mm -hmm. will be a great measurement of our advancement and our growth. Absolutely. Love that. What about you, Josh? Uh, I agree 100% with uh, Fanny, definitely getting a 1% better. Um, something that I don't think uh, I touched on or we touched on is valuing people. I think that has a lot to do with our own personal development um, is valuing people. People are the number one currency. Yeah. Um, so we need to treat it as such. Um, just being very kind to everyone that you come in contact with, um, even if you aren't able to relate to them. And um, something we touched on was experiences. <clears throat> evaluating those experiences is, is how you actually reach your goals as well. So, you know, they say experiences is the best teacher. You know, that's that's not true at all because, you know, you get older, you may not learn, you know, you may not choose to do things differently. You know, getting older is automatic. You know, learning isn't automatic. So you have to be really intentional with learning um, and reevaluating those experiences that you've had and then choosing to do differently and choosing to be better. Um, and then, you know, I'm going to say again what I said uh, earlier about, you know, if, if you have a goal in mind, 
um, reach that goal and then see if that goal brings you fulfillment. If your goal was to reach 10K followers and that doesn't bring you fulfillment, you know, scrap that goal. Like find a new yeah. goal, find a way to contribute to, you know, someone else's life um, that's, you know, bigger than yourself. So, and then that's how you find fulfillment as well. And your purpose. He so. said, l g getting older is automatic, but learning is not. I mean, like, it's, your variation <laughs> of that was, uh, your delivery of that was yeah. better. But I'm like, <laughs> yes, I love the phrasing of that. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> oh. right. Right. April, you want to wrap us up here with your last thoughts? Yeah. So mine is something that I practice daily. You know, it's a part of my life routine and focus is to um, embody the success that I want to achieve today, you know? And so that means for me, instead of constantly thinking, oh, once we get to a hundred thousand users, I can be excited, right. you know? Exactly. No, today I already feel like we're there. And so if I can embody that feeling every day, then to me, that's feeling successful because I'm excited that I get to show up and come to work every day with, with my team. Yeah, so it's definitely embodying it before it actually happens. That's amazing. Love that. Wonderful. Yes. Thank you all so Everyone, much. Thank you. Yes, Brie, I appreciate you Thanks. so much, guys. I value you. All of you are amazing rock stars. I cannot say enough great things about you all. I think that um, by the attendees and the chat that people got a ton of value out of this. So um, please let me know if you liked this kind of content, this kind of um, chat. If you wanted to reach out to any of the panelists, all their contact information is there, guys. Um, hope you guys are staying on for the next panel at 2.30. We have another track, yes. or another panel. Um, stay <laughs> on for that. But I appreciate everyone. Wonderful. All right. Thanks, Thank everyone. You so great. Hope you good. Bye. 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 <laughs> Bye, guys. <laughs>